welcome to the course on polymers. Uh, in this course, we are looking at the concepts related to polymers, uh, their properties, uh, their uses, and also focus on uh, the sustainability aspects. Uh, after having looked at uh, initial definitions uh, and uh, uh, factors which are involved in polymeric systems, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of polymeric systems, what are uh, some of the different applications of polymeric systems, we have also looked at a single macromolecule and uh, how uh, conformations in a single macromolecule is very useful uh, in terms of describing uh, many of its uh, properties for a melt or a rubber like system. Uh, wherever there is segmental motion possible. Now, uh, in this uh, week, uh, what we will do is start looking at some of the properties in the solid state. So, because of uh, the uh, macromolecular flexibility in the solution or the melt, the solid state that we get uh, is also influenced by the conformations. So, therefore, what we have learnt uh, in conformation is again useful while describing the solid state of these polymeric systems. However, once the solid state is reached, the structure gets frozen and uh, we will see that uh, it can be a glassy amorphous system, it can be crystalline system and in polymers quite often it is combination of the two. So, in this week, we will look at what are the possible uh, concepts associated with structure and uh, uh, the conformations of systems, polymeric systems in the solid state. And so, let us uh, begin by just doing a survey uh, of uh, the uh, structures in uh, biopolymers. Uh, as uh, we have been saying in this course that uh, sustainability requires uh, for us to take uh, inspiration from many of the biopolymers which are already present. So, let us uh, look at uh, what are the uh, structures. So, we will do this by looking at uh, quickly uh, the molecular structure which we have already talked about. So, I will quickly review it and then uh, we will look at uh, some of the aspects of uh, DNA as a molecule which can be used for engineering and uh, summarize uh, what do we mean when we say structure of proteins and uh, we will look at in little more detail an example of polysaccharide uh, which is pectin and how complicated uh, structure at the macromolecular level is very useful for its function. So, uh, biopolymer structure can be looked at different levels and this is something uh, which you may be familiar with uh, from your earlier courses on uh, biology and uh, physical chemistry. So, we can have the primary, secondary and uh, tertiary structure and uh, this just uh, depends on uh, 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 the sequence uh, of uh, how the monomers are attached to each other uh, or what is the local structure and ordering and of course, uh, what is the global three dimensional arrangement. So, I suggest that you read uh, about uh, these uh, structures related to proteins uh, which are described in great detail and uh, we will move on to look at just some aspects of uh, DNA, the nucleic polynucleic acid as a molecule for engineering. So, uh, the, of course, uh, this is something which uh, all of us uh, are familiar with. Uh, I am recording these lectures in the midst of a COVID pandemic and PCR is the term which is quite often uh, used. And so, this is nothing but automated synthesis. So, DNA as a molecule can be used for uh, automation and engineering. Some of the terms which we are uh, quite commonly used in manufacturing and fabrication and so on. And all of this is possible because of these hydrogen mediated very specific interactions which are present in the DNA. So, therefore, you can actually do program uh, in terms of uh, which part of DNA molecule will interact with what uh, kind of species. And uh, the other important aspect is related to the flexibility of the macromolecular uh, system. In this case, uh, we know that DNA exists as a double stranded uh, uh, species and uh, its uh, rigidity or uh, lack of uh, molecular flexibility is uh, very high uh, and therefore, uh, we can actually form structures of uh, controlled length. And more importantly, this rigidity can be controlled depending on uh, whether we uh, go from single stranded to double stranded or if we change the ionic environment. And uh, we could also place uh, uh, this rigid component as a spacer, as something separating different molecular entities. So, again like an engineering uh, at the molecular scale. 
just to remind you, uh, we have discussed this earlier. Uh, we have defined something called persistence length. And uh, I would urge you to go and look at what is the persistent length of a DNA molecule and compare it with persistence length of polyethylene. And then you will be able to see why polyethylene is called a flexible molecule and uh, double-stranded DNA is a rigid molecule. And so uh, what is uh, crucial in uh, DNA as a molecule for uh, engineering is the fact that uh, we have very specific interactions along these DNA strands. And so we can, in fact, anchor uh, different molecules. And uh, these molecules can be small molecules, proteins, or polysaccharides. And in fact, this is the basis of life, that all these interactions can be done in a very controlled manner uh, using DNA. Now, let's look at proteins. And here we will uh, look at examples of casein. And of course, from your earlier uh, uh, knowledge of proteins, you know that uh, they exist in uh, alpha helix uh, and uh, beta sheets, and uh, they can exist in all these different forms. Uh, again, the best way to uh, learn about this is just do a search uh, on these and look at the images. Uh, there are fascinating, rich variety of uh, images which can uh, immediately make you understand what is meant by each of these structures. And uh, all of these uh, structures get formed specifically because of interactions along the macromolecular chain. And these interactions could be hydrophobic, could be ionic, could be hydrogen bonding, and uh, so on. And we will uh, learn about some of these interactions in the 19th lecture, where we'll summarize some of these interactions which are possible. So let's, uh, in this lecture, uh, focus on casein. And uh, casein is a protein, and uh, of course, it's part of uh, milk. And so it's known for uh, thousands of years. And in fact, it's used also. And uh, one of the common examples, in addition to the food uh, uh, cheese making or variety of applications related to food, it's very commonly used as glue. And in fact, uh, one of the applications uh, where it is used as glue is in transformers. in insulation boards. Can you think of reasons why would casein as a substance, as a glue, be used in transformers as an in insulation? And uh, what is an insulation medium? So generally, insulation is uh, wooden or cellulosic material. And if we need a required thickness, then you may, like plywood we make, we actually put several layers of cellulosic material together to make a solid, rigid substance. And that's what is uh, insulation, uh, paper-based insulation. And in between different layer, casein is used. And uh, important aspect of providing insulation is also oil in transformers. You must have heard of transformer oil. And uh, therefore, this uh, paper-based insulation needs to interact very well with oil. And so, casein clearly has sufficient hydrophobic groups so that it can interact with oil. So, just to highlight again, hydrophobicity is required and interaction with oil is required. Now, why then casein alone? We can use many other hydrophobic substances which can be used in, as a glue. The key here is bonding with cellulose. And once bonding with cellulose is involved, we need hydrophobic and hydrophilic groups also. Because cellulose, as we have seen, contains carbohydrate. It's a basically polysaccharide. And so, therefore, we need hydrophilic groups also. So, casein has just the right amount of hydrophobic, hydrophilic combination, which can serve as adhesive between cellulosic materials and as an insulating material with oil. Very fascinating. And uh, the uh, issue with casein is also its complex structure. It, in fact, can have different sequences. So, there are different types of uh, casein. So, different sequences of amino acids are used uh, and uh, in, in biology, and therefore, 
uh, whether it's cow or goat or any other uh, mammal which is producing milk, uh, there are different varieties of caseins which are produced. And the molar masses are also different depending on the uh, origin of the casein. And then, so this is the sequence level, the primary structure itself is a combination of several things. Then they combine to variety of secondary structures. So we can have sheets, turns, coils, whatever we have discussed earlier are all present here. And uh, then these molecules, macromolecules, and these secondary structures combine to give an assembled clusters. By cluster, we mean combination of several molecules. And so, uh, we uh, some of these turns and sheets and uh, casein macromolecules get together to form uh, a smaller entities uh, called submicelle or nanocluster. And these combine where 20,000 protein molecules are involved in one micelle. And in fact, in milk, because casein is largely a hydrophobic substance, it forms these micelles and then it can be dispersed in an aqueous medium, which is what milk is. And generally, the kappa casein, uh, which we have seen, is uh, on the surface of such micelles. So, if you uh, look at uh, this casein, uh, extremely rich structure. There is sequence difference. There are... Uh, secondary structures which are different and then finally assembled into a complex micellar structure. And again, you, if you just do search on casein micelle or casein structure, you will see how rich variety of structures which are present in casein. So, in addition to being used as glue, casein can also be used in variety of biomedical applications. Given that it has this combinations of hydrophobic and hydrophilic interactions and it has presence of a micellar uh, behavior and more importantly this micellar behavior can be manipulated by changing pH or ionic environment. And so when we change pH or ionic environment we manipulate the hydrophilic and ionic interactions and therefore we can arrive at different sorts of assemblies. So you can see that uh, a biomacromolecule like casein gives us such a wide ranging capability of manipulation. And can such things be also achieved in a synthetic polymer? Can also uh, synthetic polymers give us wide ranging response where the right combination of hydrophobic and hydrophilic interactions are present. So that's a challenge for us to look at. So let's uh, finish this lecture by looking at role of polysaccharides and one example of a polysaccharide. So, polysaccharide plays several uh, roles uh, in biological systems, whether it's plants or animals. Uh, biological roles are things like recognition, uh, alteration of uh, biological environment, binding, storage of uh, energy, and uh, also mediating interactions between cells. Uh, so, they, they play very important biological function, but quite often they also play role of mechanical function. So, in our uh, joints, for example, uh, the uh, uh, synovial fluid uh, is actually a polysaccharide based system. So, movements of muscle and joint uh, lubricants are used, very mechanical function. Uh, we also have cell walls of plants. The cell walls are rigid uh, compared to the cell contents itself and it gives us the shells. So, therefore, uh, many uh, protection based uh, uh, systems uh, which serve a mechanical role also are made up of these macromolecules which are basically polymers of sugars. And uh, let us uh, look at one specific example called pectin. Pectin is there in uh, several fruits and vegetables. Uh, the commercial pectin which is available is quite often made from either orange or apple. Uh, in, in case of, uh, uh, for example, many of uh, many parts of India, we eat uh, a leaf vegetable, uh, which in uh, different languages, in uh, it's called gungura, uh, it's called ambadi. Uh, so you can go and look up uh, this leaf, and uh, this plant also produces pectin. So pectin is a very fascinating uh, uh, polysaccharide, and here I'm showing you the uh, sequence that is involved in pectin, and uh, what you can see 
is uh, it, it's a rich uh, building block using several uh, uh, components. It has been assembled together where we have uh, uh, hydrophobic and hydrophilic parts. We have branching. We have polyelectrolyte because there are carboxylic acid groups and uh, there is possibility of calcium cross-linking using these carboxylic groups. So you can see that uh, there are uh, galactose groups, there is galactoronic acid, there are methyl or acetyl groups which are more hydrophobic and a uh, lot of uh, combinations of several things using which this pectin molecule has been assembled. And you might wonder why is such complex arrangement needed? And again, the answer is in terms of function. In fact, the ripening of the fruit, we know, for example, that the skin will go from a very hard skin to a soft skin. And in fact, pectin plays a very important role in such softening. The way the pectin backbone and uh, the branches are arranged and how, whether it's the carboxylic acid groups or methylated or acylated uh, groups, this distribution pretty much determines whether pectin will give you a soft gel-like uh, behavior or rigid film-like behavior. And so when we go from a hard skin to a soft skin, actually the enzymes in the fruits are playing a role of changing its side groups from carboxylic acid to methylated side group and that changes the interaction. We go from a hydrophilic interaction between different carboxylic acid group to hydrophobic interaction and that therefore changes the structure of a pectin system. So therefore, a pectin is a very important component of uh, the cell wall and uh, what's interesting is it's, it has a hierarchical structure. There is macromolecular level information in terms of sequence, in terms of branching, in terms of different groups being present and how they assemble with this calcium cross-linking and more importantly, how they combine with hemicellulose and cellulose. And later on in this course, we will have a chance of looking at composites as a material and composites that we used from aerospace to sporting goods. Uh, just looking at cell wall as a natural engineered composite material, which has possibility of manipulating its own properties depending on the requirement. It's an excellent example to take inspiration from. So with this, we will close this lecture and uh, we will continue our uh, look at structure of uh, macromolecular systems in the next few set of lectures. Thank you.